Save the Bay's uh, annual meeting is now officially called to order. And hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Gib Conover. I am the uh, chair of the, uh, of the board. And uh, we certainly want to welcome uh, everybody here tonight. Um, there's a lot of heat today. There's a ton of traffic out there on the highways. And the fact that all of you made the effort uh, to get here is, is truly, truly appreciated. And so, and what I want to do is I want to really um, thank all of you uh, for supporting Save the Bay. Save the Bay is a, is a joint effort. It's the board, it's the staff, it's the donors, it's the volunteers, it's the members, all coming together and it makes Save the Bay work and allows us to accomplish uh, uh, our mission to improve and protect Narragansett Bay. And, you know, I have to say, in a beautiful day like this, we look out through the windows and we can see why we do this. Because uh, the bay is truly uh, a precious resource and beautiful uh, for us. Um, so your, um, your, your gifts of time, uh, talent, treasure, uh, really hit, allow us to, to do the work here. Um, and Save the Bay, uh, as probably a lot of you already know, we have, we have th three major areas that we concentrate on. One is advocacy, and really looking at the issues that af affect the Bay and making sure that those issues are handled uh, in a way that really um, protects the Bay. Uh, the second thing we do is education, and this is primarily with school kids. And really the, the mission there is, is where we are taking these kids and actually introducing them to the bay to the point where they realize and can appreciate this great resource that they have right in front of them. And so many of them uh, prior to Save the Bay experience don't even know it. So uh, that's number two. And the last thing we do is uh, restoration and, and try and improve the bay. And there's all sorts of, of projects from uh, uh, dam removals to uh, marshland restorations uh, that uh, Save the Bay works in and partakes in, and it all comes together, and uh, that's, that's what we, uh, we do. Um, so I also want to say uh, events uh, like, like this one are made possible uh, by our uh, Taste of the Bay, is made possible by our sponsors. And I believe uh, there's going to be some uh, listing of uh, sponsors uh, out, you know, probably in the tent, maybe out in, in the lobby here. So please take a, take a moment and uh, look and recognize our, our sponsors and support our sponsors so they can support us. So uh, we, we appreciate that. Um, then the, the last thing I want to say is, um, uh, because my job is not to speak much here. <laughs> But the last thing I want to say is uh, I am now at, at the end of my uh, uh, term as, as board chair. And at the end of this meeting, we will actually be turning it over, uh, the board chair, to George Schuster. Um, but I really want to say um, what an honor and a pr privilege it has been to be in this position, but really in the bigger sense to be working with Save the Bay and, and all of you and, and what you do. So uh, thank you very, very much. And with that, um, let's get on with the business of the meeting here. And the first order of business um, is to have uh, Bud Cummings, who is chair of the finance committee, uh, give the treasurer's report. So Bud. Thank you, Gib. Last year, I was unable to attend the meeting and Ruth Mullen presented the finance report, Ruth being the chair of our investment committee. And I believe she ended the meeting with the statement that if anybody had questions about our fiscal 22 results, to hold them till this year when I would be back. <laughs> so my first order of business is there any questions about 22? And I hope no, because if there was, I'd have to ask Ruth what the answer is. Uh, so we've moved on to fiscal 23, and I'm pleased to report that we ended the fiscal year in outstanding financial condition once again, thanks to the continued generosity of our members and donors, 
who not only provide support for our day-to-day -day operations, but have also somehow managed to reach into their pockets and provide us funding for a brand new aquarium that I'm sure you'll hear about in a little bit. It speaks volume to the Save the Bay brand. And if you look at any of the people who work here, some have spent their entire working careers at Save the Bay. It's, it's because of them and, and what they have done for this organization. Our balance sheet remains rock solid. We have no long-term debt. Our total liabilities, net of the operating lease for the new aquarium, are less than a million dollars. The income statement was equally strong. The grant monies we received in support of our education and restoration efforts were up 16% from 22. Government grants were up 60% from 22. Our program revenue was up 35% as Bridget and her team returned to business as usual, the school kids were back. They returned to our facilities for in-person sessions. They, people visiting our now closed education center at Easton's Beach or braving the winter weather to go out and see how many seals they could count. As I said in the past, ours is an organization that is often happy to see most expenses increase as it means that the volume of work that we're doing is going up and fiscal 23 was one of those years. Spending on our policy and habitat initiatives was up almost 20% as that inflow of government grant money allowed Wenley and her team to ramp up efforts on projects big and small. Our education team spending was up 23%. Communications rose just under 4% as our former director, Katie, continued to expand our outreach across multiple media outlets leaving our new director, Juan, with a comprehensive suite of tools to get our message out. Despite these increases, and as continued evidence that management still has their eye on the ball, general and administrative expenses only rose by 3.7%. Total operating expenses increased by 14.7%. In my first report after I became treasurer, I cited the staff as our most valuable asset a statement that remains true today. At each subsequent meeting, I've tried to highlight an area of the organization that few hear about or know about, but that is vital to our success. I noted a few minutes ago, the increase in our grant revenues, both private and government. These funds go towards our core mission, but don't just show up on our doorstep. Grant funding is a very competitive environment where many organizations compete for limited monies. Believe it or not, we're not the only state in the country that has waterfront or rivers or streams that want money to do something to help clean them up or fix them. At Save the Bay, we have an outstanding grant team of, I believe, one full-time and a part-time person for Fiscal 23 that has made an art of quick and accurate turnarounds to submit requests for funds that keep us going. This is an organization-wide process coordinated by Stephanie, who reaches out across the organization for the information she needs to complete the request. And as evidenced by the continued success of our applications, she's sure doing something right. And this year, we finally allowed her to add another full-time person to her staff to handle the volume, bringing the total headcount to two people. But her team's work is not done after she submits the application. Many funders, especially those on the government side, require ongoing reporting on how we're spending their money. In many cases, we must submit progress reports before additional funds are released, and Stephanie and her team are on top of, the, uh, on top of that as we've yet to have to borrow one cent against our line of credit to fund operations or any of the major projects that Wendley and her team do. So hats off to the grand team for what they do and hopefully a year from now. <laughs> hopefully a year from now, the pipeline will be even bigger. Any questions about this year's report? There being none. Next on the agenda is Robin Boss, who chairs our Nominating and Governance Committee. Thank you. Wow, full crowd. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Bud. 
I'm Robin Boss, Chair of our Nominating Governance Committee, and I get to uh, present the slate of board members um, for a three-year term that will begin July 1st, 2024. And I'm going to ask those individuals to stand when their name is announced and remain standing for the vote. Lisa Gould, Pam Heffernan, Neil Marcaccio, David Murray, Cheryl Nathanson, Tatiana Reinerson, and Bob Vieira. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, I'd like a motion from the floor to accept the slate for 2024. So moved. Thank you. May I have a second for the motion? Second. Thank you. All in favor? All opposed? Slate is approved. Thank you. Uh, when Gib was up here, he talked a little bit about the fact that he will be stepping down as our board president and um, off the board. Um, and I'm going to save Gib to talk about him. But there are some additional board members that are leaving our board this year. Um, we have a limit on how long you can stay on the Save the Bay board. It's part of our nominating and governance um, work that we do, um, trying to adopt best practices. Um, and I'd like to recognize the following individuals. Justin DeShaw, Gail Gennady, and Gib Conover. Justin's been a member of the board since 2015. He has served on our finance and program and policy committees and he also chaired our compensation and benefits committee. Justin is a banker and he has brought his financial acumen and wise counsel to the finance committee over the years. And just as you heard Bud describe the state of our finances, it's people like Justin who ensure that this organization uh, remains in the black and is able to do all of the work that we, we do to protect this bay. So thank you, Justin. Gail Gennady. This is, when I added up all of her years of service to this organization, it is ha virtually half the life of Save the Bay, 25 years as a board member, and likely she was on a committee before that. Her, her gift to this organization is quite extraordinary. She has chaired our development committee for the last nine years through a very successful 50th anniversary campaign through the fundraising for Save the Bay's Hamilton Family Aquarium and really stewarding our committee, working with our incredible staff to accomplish those things is quite significant. But her work here didn't end there. She also was a member of our finance committee and also was on our investment committee. And um, I, I know that Gail maintains uh, volunteering roles at a number of other organizations and that she will move on to continue to do that. So um, she is basically a volunteer and board member extraordinaire and I want to, to thank Gail for all of her service to save the bed. Gib, our outgoing board president, joined Save the Bay's board in 2011, and he has served on many committees. He served on the Finance Committee, the Compensation and Benefits Committee, but Gib will be forever remembered as the chair of our Education Committee. Gib is the man behind the boats. <laughs> it's always about the boats, more boats, because Gib's belief in experiential education and getting people out on the bay, getting our students out on the bay, allowing people to, uh, our board to get out on the bay, to see what, what we're supporting and what we're doing and to really experience it firsthand. Um, that core belief of his has been critical, critical to the expansion of the fleet of vessels that we have available to us. So um, Gib, thank you for that. Thank you for your guidance through a search for a new executive director through your guidance in development 
of um, an implementation of start of the impl implementation of our strategic plan. Um, we are grateful to you for your long service and for your leadership um, as the chair of the board over the last several years. So thank you. And lastly, I would like to thank our entire board, all of our committees and the committee members, the President's Leadership Council uh, members and trustees for everyone's ongoing service, commitment, and to support to this organization. Thank you. I don't know what to say after hearing those nice words about me. <laughs> Um, but uh, ne next up is our um, awards presentation, and we're going to have several awards that we're giving out tonight. What we're going to ask is we would like to take uh, pictures of all the awardees, but we're going to do that at the end of the meeting. So if everybody who receives an award tonight could sort of hang around after the meeting is over and come on up to the front here, uh, we'll be taking some photographs. So uh, just a note there. Um, the first... Um, Award uh, is the Allison, Allison Walsh Award for Outstanding Environmental Advocacy. And uh, we're going to have uh, Topher Hamlet, our executive director, come up and make the presentation. Hi, everyone. The Allison J. Walsh Award for Outstanding Environmental Advocacy honors one of Save the Bay's great advocates. Allison was a passionate, relentless voice for the environment. When she passed away in 2003, her husband Bill honored her by establishing an award that celebrates the outstanding advocacy of an individual in the community. This year's recipient of the Allison Award, as we call it, is Linda Perry. Linda is president of the Washington Park Association right here on Providence's South Side. She too is a passionate, relentless advocate, a voice for people, the people of Washington Park who struggle with the relentless with the re sorry, the, she's a passionate, relentless advocate, a voice for the people of Washington Park who struggle with the realities of living next to and in Providence's industrial waterfront and the many injustices that her community contends with every day. Linda has over many years mobilized community members, organizations, and public officials to fight back against the endless stream of proposals to locate polluting facilities on Allen's Avenue and at the port. She's been a consistent voice and a partner with Save the Bay against the notorious law-breaking Rhode Island Recycle Metal Scrap Operation. In April, she asked me to join her at an Earth Day celebration, which turned out to be a protest right outside the gates of Rhode Island Recycle Metals, with great media coverage to boot. Nice work, Linda. <laughs> I first met Linda when I invited her to attend the opening of Save the Bay's public pier. She was over the moon about it because it represented a whole new kind of access to Narragansett Bay for the Washington Park community. Ever the advocate, she turned to me that day and said, do you know about Public Street? It goes downhill from the hospital right by the asphalt plant and ends at the Providence River between the salt pile and the other scrapyard. That should be protected for public access too. How can we get it done? That conversation inspired a partnership between the Washington Park Association, the South Providence Neighborhood Association, and Save the Bay to persuade the City of Providence to petition the Coastal Resources Management Council to designate Public Street as a right-of-way to the Providence River. And it worked. Today, Linda is participating in community meetings to vision and design the public space for the Public Street right-of-way. The project, born of Linda's advocacy, has garnered hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants to make that space a welcome and usable space for the Southside community. When I told Linda about this, that this award also comes with a $1,000 check, uh, courtesy of Bill Allison's husband, her response was classic. Really, she said, now I can buy more trees to plant in our neighborhood. <laughs> Linda in Linda embodies the fierce, relentless advocacy of Allison Walsh, and I know that Allison would be thrilled by Linda receiving the award in her honor. So Linda, come on up and receive your award. And Jeff.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Topher. I'm thrilled, and I wish I knew Allison, to be honest. Um, it sounds like we would like each other very much. <laughs> um, thank you for the Board of Directors for, and Save the Bay for this award, the Allison J. Walsh Award. Um, for years, I have fought for a voice for the environment because it, it doesn't have a voice. It just dies on, on its own. Ignored, laughed at, hung up on, all of the above. Um, to receive this from Save the Bay is gratifying, and I realize now that I have irritated enough people along the way <laughs> and that others have taken notice. And you know that something is going right in your favor. Um, thank you for bringing up all of the, uh, the Allen's Avenue issues that I kind of forgot about. Um, with respect to the late John Lewis, this is recognition of getting into some good trouble. And Allen's Avenue needs more of and uh, more advocates for a cleaner, healthier environment. With the health issues surrounding us today, and especially in this heat crisis that we are living with tonight, um, the need to protect the natural environment is more important today than ever. It can't be under overstated. Excuse me. I'm deeply appreciative of the thousand dollar gift and plan to use it to plant trees, more trees along Allen's Avenue, and we'll be launching a initiative for matching funds from businesses in the port. Okay. Yeah, cool. and I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And that's classic Linda, too. She's going to establish. She's trying to get that money matched. So do I more trees? Each year, we, we, um, we, have the 20, we have the Environmental Achievement Award for Save the Bay. And this year, the award goes to Gary Plunkett. Gary, who picked up stakes in Oklahoma and moved to Tiverton about 40 years ago, has made his mark in his Rhode Island hometown in the Sakonet River in the Rhode Island community. For decades, he's been a leader, a champion and partner to many land use planning, to, to land use planning and protection in Tiverton. Gary's devotion to land protection and habitat diversity and his work with his fellow local stewards has resulted in the protection of countless acres of the Bay's watershed, including unique, relatively undisturbed forests, freshwater wetlands and streams that meander to Narragansett Bay and Block Island Sound. He served on numerous boards and commissions in Tiverton, including the Planning Board and the Opening Space Commission. He helped the town develop its comprehensive land use plan. Over the decades, and in partnership with the Nature Conservancy and the Tiverton Land Trust, Gary has been instrumental in protecting contiguous tracts of forest. Once these lands were secured, Gary developed a stewardship and land management plans for the town and the land trust, and he's overseen the stewardship of over 1,500 acres of land. He's been an active member of the Rhode Island Wild Plant Society and has led hundreds of walks to share his knowledge, love, and passion for wild plants with the broader community. Gary is always willing to lend a hand and share his knowledge in a humble way. He has provided his expertise to our habitat restoration staff on a climate resilience project at Fogland Beach. The people who know him best describe Gary as a collaborator, educator, steward, local historian, and champion of habitat protection. And that's why, Gary, we're pleased to honor you with our 2024 Environmental Achievement Award. Come on up. I've got to say, when I got the call from Topher, I was nonplussed, which is a fancy word for blown away. <laughs> uh, I've always had 
a tremendous amount of respect for City of the Bay because they are so, so action-oriented and results-oriented. They're right there at the head of the line fighting, leading, and, and, and winning. <laughs> so many, and I've watched them all these years. Uh, it's been total, totally, totally impressive, and to be in some way uh, affiliated with them and uh, recognized by them is really, really an honor. And, and I gotta say uh, another thing, I've, I've gotta just thank Wendy Ferguson for being a inspiration to me all these years. Um, I happened to be uh, someplace and ran into someone the other day and I was talking about Wendley and uh, and she said, oh yeah, 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 all right. And I says, boy, she's really something. And she, she says, yeah, you know her, you know the secret about Wendley? There's actually six of her. <laughs> and, and you got to believe that sometimes, the way she moves around and gets things done. So uh, I am I am humbled and honored, and I, I thank Save the Bay and, and Winley for the work she does and all, all the massive number of accomplishments they have seen. It's, it's, a, it's an honor, so thank you very much. Great. Okay, uh, next uh, I'm pleased to introduce uh, July Lewis, who is our uh, volunteer and in internship manager, and she's going to present the Volunteer of the Year Award. July? Good evening, everyone. Save the Bay has almost 3,500 volunteers who participate with us annually, and we uh, love and appreciate them all. They're all incredible, but our annual Volunteer of the Year Award is an opportunity to celebrate some of our volunteers who really go above and beyond and excel and are very worthy of some recognition. So this year, it is my great pleasure to honor Sherb Cameron. He's traveling right now, so he can't be here tonight, but please, when we get to the cheering part, cheer extra loud so we can hear it on that video later on. <laughs> Sherp's incredible journey as a Save the Bay supporter began in 1981 when he did his first Save the Bay swim. Uh, he raised the most money that year and he won a sunfish sailboat, and he was very proud to send me a clipping of that, uh, that, that swim from uh, 1981. Um, he's participated in 10 swims over the years, and when he wasn't actually swimming, he was volunteering. He was out there um, handing out towels on the beach. He was helping manage the parking, being a leader for that for us. He also volunteered with his father, Braley Cameron, uh, in particular at the CVS Charity Classic. Uh, he was a leader for that event. He, was, he participated just about every year. Um, we could always count on him to be the pointer, you know, taking charge and pointing people in that parking lot for that event that raised so much money for Save the Bay. Um, let's see, and now, as a retiree, he has even more time and energy to contribute. And he, in fact, joined our Aquarium Volunteer Educator team this past summer. And let me tell you, when I got the email from him saying he was interested in volunteering, I got on the phone immediately to our Aquarium staff and I said, you guys, Sherb Cameron wants to volunteer. <laughs> this is really good news. And it's good news because of how amazing Sherb is at everything he does. The heart he and the dedication that he puts into any volunteer project that he has, everything he does, how wonderful and warm he is to work with. And he's a great leader, a great educator, and a great ambassador. And actually, can anybody testify who's worked with Sherb? Who's worked with Sherb? Oh yeah, we've got some, like Sherb isn't, he, he's amazing. We love him. When we when I came on board at uh, Save the Bay, he was one of the first people that I heard about. So um, we are just so grateful for his decades of dedication to Narragansett Bay. And we hope he continues for years to come as part of the Save the Bay family. So congratulations to Sherb on being named Save the Bay's Volunteer of the Year. Thank you. That was a pretty good applause. I think he probably could hear that. Um, 
Next, next up uh, are the education awards. And what we're going to bring up here is Bridget Prescott, who is our director of education to present these awards. Hi, everyone. It's always hard to follow July because <laughs> she's so awesome. Um, I'm excited and really honored to present these next two awards to individuals who embody Save the Bay's education vision in inspiring the next generation of Bay stewards. Save the Bay's Educator of the Year Award recognizes an outstanding K-12 teacher who has demonstrated an innovative approach to exposing their students to the local environment through hands-on experiential learning opportunities. Our Bay Educator of the Year this year is coming to us as the aquaculture and science head from Cranston West High School. A deep passion for teaching and dedication to his students is something that is immediately evident when you work and meet with Len. His love of marine ecology and biology is demonstrated in the real life learning lab he has transformed his classroom into for his students. He's definitely passed along his passion for the marine world to them. Len's Aquaculture Lab provides hands-on experiences for his students to raise and care for the fish and plants that can be found in and around Narragansett Bay. It is rare to see students enjoy working with a teacher enough to get them back <laughs> on the weekends or after school to care for the plants and animals in his lab, and he has high school students. <laughs> In addition to his work with his students, Len has been a wonderful resource for our education team by providing opportunities for our staff to visit and meet with his, his students and learn from them in their lab. He has provided professional development opportunities for the teachers we work with and has been a freshwater science resource for our aquarist when it, come, when it came to adding freshwater species into our new aquarium. In addition to these educational opportunities, Len has also donated his time by joining in on our strategic planning focus group process and helped our habitat team by growing salt marsh grasses in his classroom. Please join me in congratulating this year's Bay Educator of the Year, Len Baker. Congratulations, Len. All right, on to our Bay Student of the Year. Save the Bay's Student of the Year Award recognizes an outstanding K-12 student who demonstrates interest in learning and or stewarding Narragansett Bay through their work in school or community. Our Student of the Year Award goes to a young lady who is in the first grade at Pell Elementary School in Newport. She is curious, dedicated, and determined. Addie joined one of our after school programs this year and was hooked. We saw her in all of our sessions for the rest of the school year. Each week she demonstrated a love for Narragansett Bay, its animals and habitats, was curious as to what they'd be learning next and was always willing to help. After our aquarium opened in March, we would see her and her family quite frequently walking around and engaging with our educators and exhibits. In an effort all on her own, Addie actually launched a fundraiser for Save the Bay and managed to raise $200 towards our mission in protecting and improving Narragansett Bay. It's okay. It's okay. All in all, we see in Addie someone who deeply cares about Narragansett Bay and has a bright future in marine science and philanthropy ahead of her. <laughs> Please join me in congratulating Adeline Loveland from Put Pell Elementary School in Newport as our base student of the year. A really big congratulations to all of our award winners. Um, next up, we're going to have our executive director's report. But 
before we, we start into that, I think we need to think back a year ago at, at this time, we were actually saying goodbye to Jonathan Stone. And at that point, Save the Bay was, was 53 years old, and we had had four fantastic uh, executive directors who have really shepherded the organization to make it um, what it was. And at that time, um, we announced to you that Topher Hamlet was going to be the interim uh, executive director uh, while we were uh, continuing the search. Well, I'm happy to announce that Topher Hamlin is not the interim executive director. He is the executive uh, director. <laughs> and I, I have to tell you, during this past year, Topher has been wearing dual hats. He's been the executive director. He's also been the director of advocacy. And somehow, he's managed to get it all done. And it just, we, we know at this point that uh, Topher Hamlet is going to be the fifth fantastic, great executive director of Save the Bay. And with that, I'll introduce Topher. Thanks, Gib. That was really nice. And, and thank you for, um, for leading our board through a very successful period of growth and change and into an exciting new era. I really appreciate it, Gib. I do want to thank the board for the opportunity to be our just our fifth executive director in our storied 54-year history and build upon the, the legacy of John Scanlon, Trudy Cox, Kurt Spaulding, and Jonathan Stone. I'm pleased to report to you, our membership, that we've had a year of great accomplishment here at Save the Bay. And I'm just going to give you a few highlights, a few among many, many, many others. We launched, advanced, or completed dozens of projects to restore bay habitats and help communities adapt to and prepare for climate change. We made great progress towards reform of Rhode Island's important but troubled coastal agency, the CRMC, and set the foundation for full reform in 2025. We mobilized over 3,000 volunteers to clean up shorelines, mark storm drains, plant dune grasses, monitor the waters and marine life of Narragansett Bay, and provide a loud, clear voice for Narragansett Bay in the halls of government. Our marine science education programs reached over 12,000 students of all ages in their classrooms, in our classrooms, aboard our vessels, and on the shores of Narragansett Bay. In over 2,100 passengers boarded our education vessels to spot seals, wildlife, and lighthouses and deepen their connection to the bay. And this spring, we celebrated the opening of Save the Bay's Hamilton Family Aquarium in downtown Newport. We opened on March 28th. As of yesterday, over 22,000 visitors, including over 1,000 school children, have experienced a new connection to Narragansett Bay and to Save the Bay. We raised all of the $7.6 million it took to build this facility without borrowing a penny. And we are now building a reserve to, to support the aquarium for years to come. That's an accomplishment. <laughs> now it takes a lot to make this place run day in and day out. I appreciate it more now than I ever did. We have a phenomenal staff, now 40 strong, working in operations, fundraising, volunteer engagement, communications, education, restoration, and advocacy. Regardless of our individual roles, we are all advocates, and we are teammates who share a passion for our mission. So I ask everyone here to, uh, I ask the staff to put your hands up and, or stand up, and everyone give our staff a great round of applause. In 2022, our board of directors and staff teamed up to forge an ambitious five-year strategic plan to transform this organization and our impact on Narragansett Bay. The plan is rooted in the urgency that we all feel about Save the Bay's mission in light of climate change. It's also rooted in the board and staff's introspection on who we are as an organization, our culture. Make no mistake, climate change is today's emergency for Narragansett Bay and our plan challenges this organization to step up our game even more. We can do this. We've done it before, and it's how we started as an organization. 
Our mission is to protect and improve Narragansett Bay, but our mission is also embedded in our name. Our first executive director, John Scanlon, created our iconic red and white logo and bumper sticker. Why red? As Scanlon explained, Narragansett Bay in 1970 was in a state of emergency. We were the Red Cross for the Bay, he said. Indeed, the future of the Bay was hanging in the balance then. Big energy companies targeted the Bay for oil refineries and LNG terminals. Pollution was rampant. The Upper Bay and the Providence River were an open sewer. In responding to that state of emergency, our founders were driven by a vision of a clean, healthy, fishable, swimmable Bay accessible to everyone and a spirit of tenacious advocacy to get us there. Today, our board and staff work to carry on that tradition. I'm forever grateful to Save the Bay's founders for fending off the full-scale industrialization of Narragansett Bay in the 1970s and setting in motion the all-important work of cleaning up the bay. Today, it's inspiring to see kids learning how to sail right here in the Providence River. It's heartening to see residents from the south side and other neighborhoods catching bluefish and stripers from our docks and the shorelines of the Bay Center. Last month, we joined the city of East Providence to celebrate a feat that was once that once seemed beyond reach, the opening of a public swimming beach right here on the shores of the Providence River. Wow. And, we're, and by the way, we're not done. Save the Bay has always responded effectively to emergencies. In the 1990s, we sounded the alarm on the loss of bay habitats and then set out to restore salt marshes, rivers, and freshwater wetlands. Over the decades, we've become the go-to organization for habitat restoration in the Bay watershed and throughout the region, and a leader in the urgent work of helping the Bay and Bay communities adapt to climate change. Along the way, Save the Bay's board and staff had the vision and the foresight to prepare future generations to be the voice of Narragansett Bay for Narragansett Bay by growing our education program from its very humble beginnings to a full-fledged year-round marine science education program that has engaged hundreds of thousands of students over the years. Along the way, we also launched and grew our waterkeeper programs to be our eyes and ears throughout the watershed and maintain our role as that tenacious watchdog that prevents and responds to threats to the bay. And we built a strong, vibrant volunteer program that makes Save the Bay a much more effective advocate. In response to today's emergency, climate change, we are strengthening all of these programs so that Save the Bay will be the most effective voice possible for Narragansett Bay and for the people who depend on it. And not a moment too soon. Bay waters are warming and rising. Shorelines are eroding and changing with each major coastal storm. Communities around the Bay are grappling with the environmental, economic, and, imp and social impacts of all of it. The trend of armoring the shoreline with rocks and walls, whether illegally or by permit, is deeply troubling because it's harming coastal habitats and limiting people's constitutional rights to access to and along the shore. Save the Bay's role is to be the voice that insists that the health of the Bay and people's access to it are driving forces in the response to climate change. Kurt Spaulding, Kurt, are you here? Is he here? Nope. Well, Kurt Spaulding, uh, who was my mentor here at Save the Bay, described Save the Bay's work as community building. Community building to save Narragansett Bay to leave it in better shape than we found it and, and to ensure that future generations will carry on our work. To that end, a key pillar of our strategic plan is a rock solid commitment to strengthen the bay saving community by building diversity on our staff, our board of directors, our volunteer base, and in all our programs, and to deepen our engagement in environmental justice communities. I firmly believe that this is the right thing to do. I also believe that the best way to build the bay saving community is to be more inclusive, to reach out, to listen, to be respectful, and welcoming of people from all backgrounds and walks of life. I love Save the Bay for its vision, its can-do attitude, its boldness, and its ability to adapt to the ever-changing conditions in Narragansett Bay and the world. So, as we head into our 55th year, let's all appreciate our founders and predecessors who built this organization, this ever-expanding community of Bay Savers. Let's celebrate our recent achievements but let's also continue to challenge ourselves to raise our game 
and be the most effective advocates that Narragansett Bay has ever had. Thank you all for supporting Save the Bay's mission and work. Thank, thank you, Tolfer, and, and also I'll, I'll add my uh, thanks to the staff who do all the work and are accomplishing so much uh, here at Save, at Save the Bay. And so at this point, there's uh, one uh, last item of business uh, that we uh, have to do. And what I would like to do is invite uh, George Schuster, who is the president-elect uh, for the board, uh, to come up here. And this will be the official uh, handing over of the gavel. <laughs> so this is the end of my term and the beginning of George's. So first of all, George, congratulations. And George, what's your gavel? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, my job is to be extremely quick because I'm now standing between you and the food and drink outside. Um, but I do want to do two things. One is to uh, give special thanks to Gib once again for all of his leadership uh, being president of Save the Bay's board for the last two years, for all of his work for this organization over decades. Uh, Gib, in addition to everything everyone else has said, you have been a great mentor to all of us who have joined the board and served under you as president. I thank you for teaching us how to do this job, and I hope you'll be around uh, by the phone when I need to call you for some advice in the next couple of years. Absolutely. I think Topher is standing by with a token of our appreciation for you, Gib, and all that you've done for Save the Bay. This could be a beautiful little company. <laughs> much. Thanks, Kim. Um, the last thing I want to do before I hit the gavel and adjourn the meeting is just to say one thing about me and my sort of entry point into this job and into Save the Bay. Um, you know, the thing that I thought of as I thought about what one thing I wanted to say to all of you is that Save the Bay is older than I am. And what's remarkable there is I think I'm the first president of the Save the Bay board to say that. And what that means, though, in terms of the world out there is that Save the Bay was here cleaning up this water when I was a kid growing up in Warwick and couldn't swim on the beach down the street from my house. Save the Bay is still here 54 years later and tomorrow morning I'll be out in that same water training for the Save the Bay swim which scarily is happening in less than a month. <laughs> that alone, right, my journey over my lifetime, Save the Bay's journey over that half a century has meant that myself and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of other Rhode Islanders are able to enjoy this water in a way that they weren't when I was born. That is immeasurably important to me, and I am humbled to be a part of making sure that Save the Bay is always around to continue to protect this natural resource. So with that, thank you. <laughs> So with that, I will do my task, which is to adjourn this meeting. The meeting is adjourned.